Hey guys, this is Einar. I hope you're doing great today and welcome to your 28th tutorial in Basic Statistics 1 in Excel. Uh, today we're going to talk about a really important correlation coefficient which is called RxY. Now, why is RxY so important? Well, it's important because uh, it's very useful. Uh, we can use it to find not only the correlation, the strength of a correlation between two variables, but we can also find, it, uh, find the direction of this correlation. So we can find out if it's negative or if it's positive. And that's why it's uh, used a lot more often than Pearson's R, for example which we discussed in the last tutorial, which can't be used for that purpose. Um, also, this, this correlation coefficient is based on data that on an interval or a ratio scale, um, although I must mention it's sometimes used on an ordinal scale in practice anyway, so that might happen. Be ready for it, guys. Uh, so what do we have here? Well, uh, to begin with, I have a picture here called Pearson. He's the guy who came up with this, uh, with this measure. Uh, if you click this link, you'll get to a Wikipedia site about him. You can read up on the on the history of statistics. Um, I've also created a little scatter plot here because we have two variables. Uh, one of them is uh, Facebook relations and one of them is AFK relations. Now AFK stands for away from keyboard. And I plotted these out here and it seems like we have a positive correlation. Now I can mention, I just made these numbers up, but that's what we have here. We have a, it seems like when you look at these dots going up like this, if we were to draw a line to describe the data, it would be an upward sloping line like this. So I'm guessing we have a positive correlation, but who knows? We we might find we might see. I'll mention also I'm not going to be talking too much theory in this tutorial. Just check the theoretical tutorial theoretical tutorial number three about Pearson's R uh, before you watch this tutorial actually, because I I made a special one because this is such an important uh, correlation coefficient. It's used so much in the social sciences, so you guys really need to know it. Um, <clears throat> we have our two variables right here. Um, Facebook relations, which is X, we're saying uh, this is the independent variable, and we're saying the number of Facebook relations you have is going to have an effect on the number of AFK relations you have, away from keyboard relations you have. These uh, are just uh, series, uh, serial numbers. I'll write serial there in English, so it's really clear for you. Uh, these are the serial numbers. This is observation number one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. So this could be described as I, actually, if you, in our, in our more complicated formulas. But what's the theoretical tutorial about that? Okay, so what are we doing? Well, we want to find out if these two variables covariate with each other. So what I mean by that is that when uh, x is at a high variation, when it varies at a high number, you will also see y varying at a high number, and that describes a positive correlation. If it was the other way, then when x is varying at a high value, then y would be varying at a low value, you would have a negative correlation because an increase in the value x would mean a ne would be a negative uh, decrease in the, in the variable y. So that's, the, that's what we're looking for here. So what type of variation are we going to measure? Well, earlier we, we, we've been using frequencies, we've been using ranks as in Pe Pearson's R, but this time we're going to be using the variation around the mean, which is actually related to the standard deviation as we talked about in an earlier tutorial. So watch that one too actually before you watch this one, otherwise it's going to be hard for you to understand what we're doing. So we need our uh, x bar to begin with uh, for x and even for y, so we can measure the distances to, to uh, the mean. So we'll begin by writing in here equal to average. We mark our data set like this. We close the parentheses, I'm going to zoom in for you. So what we did was we used the, the formula in Excel just to calculate average because otherwise this tutorial will become so long. Uh, but for you guys that are taking the test, you'll have to calculate all of these things manually. Uh, just so you know, if you use the formulas in the test, you'll get minus points for that. So be aware, you have to calculate everything manually when you're taking the test. Okay, so <clears throat> We begin, we mark our x values minus, you see, minus there, uh, our x bar value, which is 400. Right there, okay? Uh, and we need to fixate our x bar with a dollar sign so it doesn't change. And then we can just pull it down all the way through our data, like so. Uh, and as in the standard deviation, when you sum up all the distances from the mean, you'll get zero. So we've done it correctly if we get zero there. Um, <clears throat> next, we need to standardize our 
x minus x bar values because we don't want this rxy value to be dependent on the scale of our different uh, variables. I mean, I might want to compare my rxy for different investigations with different variables, and that would mean that we, we need this to vary between a set distance, and we want, in this case, to vary between minus 1, which is a perfect ne negative relationship, and plus 1, which is a perfect positive one. But check that theoretical tutorial for more information about that. We're going to take our distances, uh, and we're going to divide them by our standard deviations. So we need to calculate that, and I'm going to use the formula this time. S-T-D-E-W-E-V. I mark my data like this. I go over here and I close the parenthesis and I get, we got a standard deviation and average distance to the mean of 399 Facebook friends. So I take my distances, I divide them by my standard deviation right there. Okay, so we put a dollar sign here in between to fix it. And then we pull it all the way down through our data set. Oops, yeah, there it went well. There we go. All the way down. And th this hasn't changed the relationships between the observation here. We're still going to get a sum of zero when we sum them all up, if we've done this correctly. I think there might be a problem with the formula. We'll see. No, it was done correctly. Excellent. So we, we haven't changed the characteristics of the data. We just changed the scale that it's on. Um, and we're going to do this for y, too, because we want them to be on the same scale for it to be comparable between um, investigations and, and, and etc. So we're going to need our y bar equal to our average and we're going to mark our data set like this all the way down there, close the parentheses and we get an average of eight AFK friends in our data set. The distance to the mean we take our observations for y we go down here we mark our y bar or our or mean or our average as it's also called and put in a dollar sign here and we just pull it all the way down through our data like so. And this should also equal zero because when you add up all the distances to the mean, you'll get zero. And we've done it correctly. Need a standard deviation for y. Like that. So we mark our, our y, y variables. No, sorry, our y observations there. Uh, we close the parentheses and we get an average people have 3.94. AFK friends, and AFK stands for away from keyboard. I repeated it so you so you know what I'm talking about. Um, we're going to standardize our our y observations from our y distances from the mean. <laughs> As we go, the distances uh, divided by divided by our standard deviation for y. We fix it with a dollar sign, and we pull it all the way down like this. And just to show you once more that we haven't changed the actual characteristics of the data, we just changed the scale that it's on. I'm going to sum it up, and it still gets zero. So we've done it correctly. Uh, now, if you look at this formula here, it's a problem that we, we, we get zero when we're summing up our standardized values because, well, you, you we'll just get zero and multiply by zero, and you, the RxY will always be equal to zero, no matter what the observation values are here. So we need to take care of this somehow. Now when we did, when we were calculating the standard deviation, we raised them by two. I mean, we multiplied them by themselves because a negative um, number multiplied by itself will become a positive value. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply them by each other, which means we're still going to get negative values sometimes, but they're going to add up to something larger than zero. Uh, and you'll see what I mean when I, when I calculate this. So let's just go um, our z values for x multiplied by our z values for y. And we pull it down all the way here. And now if we sum them up like that, we get a value that's larger than zero. And another point with these uh, multiplications we've been doing here is that these are going to determine if our correlation is positive or negative. Because if we have a positive number on the top of the formula right here, we have a positive correlation. If we have a negative number, we have a negative correlation. Now, uh, how is that determined? Well, uh, as in the theoretical tutorial, uh, in, the, in the positive quadrants in our data set where either when you were multiplying a negative number by a negative number and you get a positive number, or when you're multiplying a positive number by a positive number, you're still getting a positive number. Let's see if I can find an observation in, in the negative quadrants, so to speak. And yeah, here's one. This one is located in a negative quadrant because you're having a, 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 a negative number multiplied by a positive one, and that means you're going to get a negative number. 
so watch the theoretical tutorial and this is where you can see the quadrants that what quadrant the observations are located in that's what this is this one is located in a negative quadrant this one is located in a positive quadrant and when you sum these all up you're summing up uh, in what quadrants are these distances located? If they're located in a positive quadrant, we're going to get a positive correlation. If we get most of them in a negative quadrant, we have a negative correlation. And if we have e them equally divided between the negative and the positive quadrants, we actually don't have a correlation, and our xy is going to equal zero when you sum them all up. So that's how that's how this measure works. And we're going to calculate it now just to see what correlation we have. We need the sum of our zx multiplied by our zy values. Put it right there. And we have all the parts we need to calculate this except n. So we're going to have to go equal to count. And I know this is becoming a really long tutorial, but this is a complicated um, correlation coefficient. So it's going to have to take some time. We mark our data set. Close to our parenthesis, and we get 25 observations. So let's start plugging in our numbers. It's equal to the sum of zx multiplied by zy. We got it right there. Divided by a parenthesis n minus 1. And minus 1 is about degrees of freedom. That's something you're going to have to study later. Uh, and we get a positive correlation, the coefficient of 0 0.72. And I think that fits well with our uh, scatter plot here, where we said in the beginning of this tutorial that it seems like we have a positive, positive uh, correlation. Right there, you can see. You can see, I can zoom out some more. See here? You can see that there seems to be a positive correlation. Now, if I did this using a, uh, uh, an Excel command, it's called Pearson. And then you mark your first variable, which is going to be the x variable, like, like that, our independent variable first. And then you mark your uh, dependent variable, which is going to be y, AFK relationships in our case. And we check, yes, we did it right, we got the same result. So basically that's how you calculate RxY in practice. Um, we spend a lot of time on this in our tutorials, but it's an important measure. And um, I wish you good luck and have a really great day. Bye-bye.